Hi, welcome to Markets of Sunshine. This is Marcia, and today we're going to make some beautiful succulent planters using teapots, teacups, and pitchers. So I am just wanting to do something a little different here today on the channel to make our craft rooms a little more nature friendly and bring the outdoors in. So one of the top plants for putting oxygen into the air is the fern. The, this is the Boston fern, and I have a yard full of them, as you can see here. I have thousands of these ferns growing all over my yard. This is just one area. So I have an orchid pot in my gazebo, and I went out to there and I pulled this little fern and he has some roots on the bottom and I'm using succulent soil and then now this cactus was given to me or cacti I'm not sure what is really the proper terminology but you know for us lay people who <laughs> who just love plants but we don't get into all of the you know Latin root words and all that kind of a thing so it's very, very prickly, so I'm making sure I'm staying back far away. This plant is a cascading type of a plant. And I'll show you at the end my host plant, the mother plant that I uh, took this off of. Actually, this had fallen off of the plant because I get squirrels coming in my gazebo. And for whatever reason, I don't know what made it do this, it started pulling the petals off of my cactus, uh, Christmas cactus and just started nibbling the leaves. And I looked it up and it said when they need water, but I we have water all over the yard. So I don't know what was going on and we feed them every day. So I don't know if that was the reason, but at any rate, um, this one had, I think he knocked it off when he got too close to the plant because the table that it's on um, or it na may have naturally fallen off. But then what it started doing, I'll show you, you see those are roots. So the table that it fell on, it was growing roots at the end that I put down into the soil, but it also was growing roots into this um, groove. It's a tile top uh, made out of slate. Uh, table and it was actually rooting there so I just cut it off as you can see right there which I'm sure will not hurt it at all and then it has other little roots coming off of it as you can see here but I put the one end into this so when my friend gave me the plant it came with I don't even know two or three of these and very quickly it just starts to produce more and it cascades. So that's why you, I put it in this tall pitcher because she says it's going to be a cascading one so you don't want it in something short and stubby like these or the teapot. So then I went out to my garden and I have succulents so I just cut off from the stem keeping the little flowers at the end because I have never propagated succulents and I did not want to try it from the leaf and I know that when you do that you have to let it supposedly dry out but I watched several other videos before I did this and I found a lady who was just taking them like this and putting them in the soil putting a little moisture and then she said they will naturally start to root themselves so I'm going to leave it like this and see what happens this one came off of another plant that I have so these are two different varieties and I don't remember what their names are. And then this one, I've never, again, this is the first time I've ever propagated any plant. And succulents are the easiest by far. And this one has the main host mother plant, probably has maybe 20 of these little babies growing on it. So I gently used a plastic spoon and uh, knocked it off the side and it already had roots growing. So I just put, placed him down in here. And this is one of those little prickly ones as well. So I was made very sure I had my gloves on. And I just put a little hole 
popped him in there. He, he went in very easily. And the same thing with this one. I just pulled off the leaves at the end and popped the stem down in there. And the same thing with this one, as you can see. So this one's stem is much longer and it curved. So I just left it like that with the natural curve. And I'm, you know, just put it, tried to center it the best that I could. And then this one was easy to just try to put it in the center, but because it's so long and heavy, I didn't want to cut that piece off. And so I will try to find some real pretty rocks that I can probably pick up a bag, I think, at the dollar store. Uh, what are they calling that? Dollar twenty-five? <laughs> I don't know. Dollar fifty? I don't want to turn my camera. And then this fern, we're going to see what it does here in this pot. When they're in a pot, they don't spread as much. It will, there will, it will produce more. So as it does, I will show you guys. So that's how easy it is to really perk up your craft room. And now I'm going to just look for areas. Um, around my craft room, but right now I want to keep them here um, at my craft table and in front of the window. So I'm just going to move them because I, where I usually film, and then the I've got all kinds of things. So I've got the curtain here. I've got my little turntable here, so I can't put the handle where that's it's going to interfere with that. So I can just angle the handle back that way, and I want the fern. Obviously, they they need light. So even the succulents will need light. So I can't put them on this side of the table because this is the light I need when I'm filming. Obviously the curtain blocks that right there, but I do have the shelf. So I'm thinking I'm gonna move these little jars here out of the way, just move them over behind the curtain. And then I will put the succulents down here. So we'll put this little cactus here, and we put this little one here. Aren't they cute already? It's so cute. And then the teapot, I think I'm going to take my teapot to the living room and put it in the living room in front of a window. So let me show you where I'm going to put it. Okay, so I have this cute little table in my dining room area. And I decided this would be the perfect location to put him. And then the teapot, this one a friend gave me, and this has the variegated vine in it. So beautiful. And then she added a artificial berry kind of a decoration on it too as well. But isn't that beautiful? And then what she used was just the floral green whatever they call that stuff. I don't even know what it is, what it's called. Can't, it's not coming to me right now at the top of my head, but you know that green floral arranging clay stuff. And I did not know, she didn't give me any instructions with this, so I'm gonna have to look it up to see. It looks, it's been looking good. It's, it's staying, looking healthy. And um, I'll have to see if it starts to, you know, starts to vine. And then what, what will I do with it? I, use, I have these, I have them in my yard and they just grow wild all over the yard and on the ground and they make their little trails and vining and do what all they want to that way. And I've had these in bigger pots uh, years ago and then I would just make a string and then let them climb up the string and go across the window, but that was on a patio. So I'm thinking he's probably gonna wind up being out in my garden in the gazebo because um, I don't want the pot being filled up with water so the gazebo has the roof on it and that would protect it from there. So now I have this beautiful one here on this table next to my antique lamp which I absolutely love and a friend gave me this cute little farmhouse metal 10 sunflower basket and then that's a vintage crystal basket and then a vintage um, baby shoe, which I'm going to turn into a planter, and I use it right now for my to hold my phone charger cord, and then this pretty little cup. I'm going to also all these are going to be turned into planters, and then this cute little oh my goodness wagon, 
and I just could not resist that and you can put plants in here but the problem is is this thing moves so so easily so I have to make sure I put something very uh, stable behind it so this is blocking it from rolling forward so I need to do something in the back as, as well but I'm just using for now it's just a little piece of felt here and I have a little piece of cardboard underneath that one and then I have a teacup down in there that I will probably eventually put a succulent in it as well okay so this is the host plant that I took that little baby off of you can see that top portion I could actually uh, take it off and use it in another pot and then all down in there there's lots of more that I can take off and look at all this that's growing there on the side and then here is the orchid plant that I took the ferns out of it, the one fern. And then I have this um, moss that I can use as well into a succulent planter. And then this was the host plant of that other one that I told you how they cascade. So you see how they grow up and then they start cascading as they bend over the side of the pot. And then that was the other host plant that I took the other two off of. So I just cut off one of the stems and then I cut off this one. Isn't this gorgeous here? Oh, it's just beautiful. So now I am going to journal about making my succulent garden. So I'm going to write in my journal. So first I start with the date. And today is the 7th, I believe. Okay, so I said, made a teacup succulent garden for my craft room. I used an old teacup, I used old teacups and a teapot and a metal pitcher. So now this is something that I've started incorporating as I was talking to you about. And this journal is to journal about the things you do during the day. So now, this is the first time I've ever, like I said, propagated succulents. First time I've ever made a garden out of teacups and teapots in a planter. So I thought this would be a cool video. So this video was about journaling about your day and how to use your journal prompts with your journals and then whatever happens that day, whatever you're doing that day. So I thought this is a great opportunity for me to journal about my teacup and teapot and pitcher gardens and my succulent garden that I've made today for my craft room, for any place in my house 
that I want to uh, add some beautiful color and liven up the, a corner. So I'm going to make another just teapot garden using just the Boston ferns. And I'm going to um, put that into my bathroom. I have a beautiful shelf window seat in front of my in my shower <clears throat> in front of my window and I think a beautiful fern right there would absolutely be gorgeous and the be easy to water the steam and all those kind of things would it will just keep it moist now one thing that you can do there's two options when you're making these um, succulent gardens or flower gardens plant gardens using your teacups teapots and pitchers now I had my husband drill holes in the bottom of all of these so if you are handy with a drill, you can do it yourself. You want to put water, and it takes a little bit of force, and does it goes quickly. But, I mean, his, his strength is, you know, I mean, with, with just in a matter of seconds, he had uh, the hole drilled. The only teacup that was the hardest for him to do, um, which I only had the one teacup, <laughs> I showed you two teacups, but the one with the little baby cactus, let me reach over. Okay, so this one he's not drilled a hole in yet, because I watched several videos and said you can put them with a hole without drain holes. So I said, well, let me start this one, because the host plant that I have, the main plant in, is just a fish bowl with no, no drainage, and it's done fine in there, you know, for years. So I decided, well, let's leave it like this for now. And um, as it grows, if it starts to outgrow the pot like the other one did, then, you know, I'll, do, I'll deal with that as the time comes. So this one does not have a hole in the bottom. Whereas all of the others, I did have him drill holes. The larger pitcher has one main hole. The teacup has one main hole. And I would say probably about quarter inch across diameter. And then the teapot, he first started with a smaller drill bit and he put about five holes. Then he went to a larger drill bit and just en enlarged and enlarged the holes. And we put probably about six holes in the bottom of the teapot. Um, which it doesn't matter, you know, according, succulents don't really, you don't want to overwater succulents. So if you know anything about succulents, they like to tend to be toward the dry to slightly moist. You don't ever want to soak them. I mean, if they're out in the wild, obviously, because they have well drainage, <clears throat> it doesn't, the mat, rain doesn't matter. But you can do this method with any plant. But keep in mind that the larger the plant can grow, the pot, it, you need a big pot that you're, when you start off with. So I was going to get one of my baby spider plants because those are so easy to propagate. Now I have propagated a spider plant before, so I've never done succulents, but I have done spider plants and because they're just so super to do, super easy. And I put one of those that had grown pretty good size into a hanging basket and he has tripled in size now from just a few months ago when I put him in there. And so I thought about that and I said, those things get pretty big, pretty fast. And I'm not sure, do they stay to the size of the container or will they just, you know, get really, really big? One thing I've noticed too about spider plants is they do the best in more of a shady area with just a little partial sun. I have one pot that I showed you, it's right out my craft room window, and it should have really, it should be looking a lot better. It kind of looks a little pale <laughs> to me, actually, and my one in the gazebo has got much more vibrant green on it, um, but I've seen people put daisies into a teacup, into a teapot, but I thought to myself, Hmm, I don't know if that's really the wisest way to start off with, not in a teacup, but a succulent, by all means, would be fine in a teacup. And I would only put one plant. I've seen them stuff it 
And then the lady also that I've watched said, you know, these are only temporary when you when you, if you're going to just overfill it. So I said, no, let's just not overfill it. Let's just put one. So that's why I put one variety, one little cluster, one little stem of, in each teacup. But anyway, this is how you can incorporate your daily routine into journaling. This one I journal I made myself with my Cinch machine. I have uh, only made a few. I've, I've had it for a few months, six months I think at least, and I, I made a few journals up and I have a few for sale in my Etsy shop. So because this had a beautiful garden and fern cover, and I started it off with my affirmations. I was using it for affirmations, but then I didn't really go much further with that because I already have another book that I had that in. So then I thought this would be a perfect garden book. So now I'm going to start documenting my garden journey and, and things that I do in my garden. So I thought this would be perfect. And I'm going to make more of these little teacup and teapot and planter gardens and start uh, giving them as gifts. And then I got another fabulous idea from another lady of just, you know, watching several channels, not just particular, not one in particular, just to get ideas of using China in the garden. And I'm a big teapot and tea party fan, tea garden, tea, anything to do with, with tea, teacups, I collect them, teapots, I collect them. And so I used to have quite a lot of vintage um, old china, the uh, Johnson's Brothers, uh, that line that's the green, the blue, the brown, the red. And I donated some of that. I just finally donated it to Goodwill. And I have some better quality china. So I'm thinking, you know, that's fine. I'm not going to use it. And how about just decorating, using it in my garden? So once I have weeded the garden really, really good, because we've been getting so much rain here in Florida, that um, in my area, my the weeds are beginning to overtake my flower garden, my pollinators garden. So I need to get out there and, and weed it. And then once I do, I'm going to show you how I'm incorporating. So I have the one teacup um, that's a little... Uh, watering spot for the birds. It's not a feeder, but it's for the water. And they love to drink out of it. Well, I had it in one location and I moved it. And I had a little wheelbarrow that was my daughter's little tyke's wheelbarrow. And I moved them because the ferns and the gardenia and the ginger plants were overtaking the area. And do you know they won't drink out of it <laughs> where, I, where I moved it? I didn't move it that far. I said, oh, you little stinkers. So I said, fine, I will clean it up and put it back where it was and just have my husband, we're going to, I guess I'll have to prune the area. And then uh, they are definitely creatures of habit. So they don't like it when you move their stuff. And so I'm going to make more of those little teacups. And when I do that, I will probably uh, be with my husband's help. And then um, I will list uh, the supplies uh, ahead of time for you in the community section of my channel here. So I hope you will subscribe so that you will get updates. And then I'll put all the supplies that you're going to need and then you can start gathering your supplies ahead of time and we're going to make teacup ornaments for the garden that you can put a plant in or you can put water in for birds and it, it's, they're just going to be darling. And we're going to decorate with plates and bowls and cups and teapots in the garden and we're going to put plants in them as well. So I thank you so much for being here with me today on my channel and I hope you enjoyed this and, and inspired you of how you can use your journal for things you've done in your day so that it's obviously something too that I want to remember this day. I want to be able to look back and say yeah what day and what year was that that I made this beautiful succulent garden and my beautiful tea party garden. And then I can say, oh yeah, it was September 7th, 2022. So stay safe, keep creating in the sunshine, and I will see you in the next video.